Hello everyone, my name is Roy, and in this recording I'll be showing how to set up a GraphQL API using just the command line. And for this, we'll be using the steps and CLI, which you can install from npm. As you can install it from npm, it means it needs a node runtime in order to execute. So I've set up a new project in VS Code that is using node. So in here I have node version, I believe it's 14 installed, meaning I can use this node version to install the steps and CLI. To install it, you can just copy paste this command, but make sure to also append the global flag so that we install the steps and CLI globally and you can use it for many other workspace on your computer. So this will install the steps and CLI. It will use as the node version you have on your computer and then makes the CLI available. So while this is installing, let's have a look about at the things you can do with the steps and CLI. You can use it to build your GraphQL API without any code. So what you can do here is you can go to the steps and website, stepsand.com slash getting dash started. And in here you can find all the steps to do what I'll be showing in this video. You need to install the steps and CLI. You can optionally create a steps and account because if you don't create an account, you're still able to use steps and and create a GraphQL API. The only downside is that you won't have any protection, meaning that it will create a public endpoint that is available to everyone that has this public endpoint. And after installing the CLI, you can create a GraphQL API for any data source. And all these data sources can be linked using just CLI. If I get back to my VS Code project, I can see Stepsan is installed here. It's version 0 0.20. Let me double check this. The Stepsan version. Very good. And in here, I can start a new Stepsan project. I can start a new Stepsan project by importing a data source or by running the command Stepsan in it. So this will ask me how I'd like to name my GraphQL endpoint. It always gives me something funny. So this is API dash smiley chipmunk. I don't want to call my APIs this. So let me do Roy GraphQL. So this is definitely better than smelly chipmunk. Uh, it creates a steps and config file that has my endpoint name. Let's see, I made a typo there, like this. So now I have everything set to import a database. So if I clear this up. See what I can do with the steps and CLI. I can do steps and import, figure out what I can do, steps and help. You can see I can import schemas. And schemas are all the different data sources that you can find on the website of Stepsan. Meaning we can run Stepsan import MySQL. In case you want to import a MySQL database, we can run Stepsan import PostgreSQL. In case you want to import a Postgres database, of course, do the same for a GraphQL API. So let's say you want to state your federated GraphQL API. You can just run steps and import GraphQL on all your different GraphQL APIs. And then there's something else called steps and import curl. And this is a nice one as it works slightly different than the other ones. It will take a endpoint that you provide to it and generate a GraphQL schema on top of it. So let's say we take a REST API and there are some examples here. A source, let's say we have a REST API endpoint. So of course, we can introspect. So let's say steps and import curl will do something for us. Um, we can just run this. This will introspect the GraphQL, the REST API endpoint that I provided to it, and then generate a GraphQL schema for it. So it will send a curl request, take the output of the API endpoint. You can see it has all these different fields and then create a address custom directive for it. And this is similar to what it does if you just run a curl command. So let's just try and run a curl command. You can see it returns a JSON, which is an array with all these different fields. And these same fields will be in my GraphQL schema. So we can see Country region, country region will also be there. Um, state province, customer ID, all these fields from the JSON response are also in this GraphQL schema. And then the only thing I need to start the schema is run steps and start, which will take my GraphQL schema and deploy it to the cloud. 
And once it deploys to the cloud, to the cloud it will also create an endpoint for you. So you can see I haven't signed up for a steps and account. So I have a public GraphQL endpoint, which I can just copy, paste, and then find a GraphQL interface for this API. And from this GraphQL interface, I can send requests to the GraphQL server um, to see what data is available. And also, if I go back to my project, it shows me a sample query. So I can query this GraphQL API either using the GraphQL interface or by just running a curl command. And from this GraphQL interface, I can also inspect what data is available. So if I would be clicking on the right side, you can find the documentation explorer. You can see this query called my query uh, with all these different fields. You can see there's an address, email name, orders, and it's the same data as you can find in the REST API. And then whenever you want to introduce more types and more schemas to the GraphQL schema, the thing you need to do is play with the files in your VS Code or in your other project and run the steps and start command again. So this is everything you need to start and build a GraphQL API using just your command line. So make sure to subscribe to our channel to find more videos about how to continue building with the steps and CLI. And with this, I'd like to end and hope to see you again soon.